Hello, my name is Adam Gerlach. I'm a research aerospace engineer at the United States Air Force Research Laboratory's Control Sciences Center of Excellence. Today I'm going to introduce to you the Koopman Operator, in particular one of its unique properties that we can leverage alongside Julia's composability to develop efficient methods for computing expectations, to then use those efficiencies to solve optimization under uncertainty problems. To give you a brief overview of the Koopman operator, consider some scalar valued function or observable G that maps the system state into a scalar value. Then consider some state map S that describes the evolution of a system. This could be from a discrete system or a discrete form of a continuous or hybrid system. We're then interested in the evolution of the observable as the system evolves. This can be described via the linear Koopman operator or also known as the composition operator. There's been a lot of interest recently in the literature in understanding this operator because the properties of this operator reveal properties of the underlying system. And because it's a linear, it essentially allows you to transform potentially a finite nonlinear system to a linear, albeit potentially infinite dimensional system. Now, a lot of the recent advancements in the literatures is is geared towards approximating this operator via data-driven approaches, such as that found in data-driven DIFFEQ. However, in this particular work, we don't actually need an explicit representation of the operator. We just need to understand the action of the operator on observables of interest. And that is simply this composition. Now, how is this related to uncertain systems? Let's consider our system S that has some initial joint density function F and some observable that exists on some future time horizon. We wish to compute the expectation of that observable. One way to do that is to push the density function through the system, arriving at this push forward density, and then we can compute the expectation as the inner product of these two functions. Alternatively, we could think of taking the observable function g and pulling it back through the system using the Koopman operator. And that allows you to compute a new observable, kg. Now we could take the expectation of this new observable with respect to the initial PDF, or density f, as shown. But these two approaches are equivalent. They're different means to the same ends. Essentially, we can push density forward through the system or pull the observable back through the system in these calculations as they are adjoint operations. Now what's the benefit of doing that? pullback via the Koopman operator versus the push forward. One, the pullback is simpler to evaluate, has improved numerical stability. There's some well-defined structure on the dom domain of integration that allows us to use some simpler solution approaches. And if we have multiple observables that are supported on different time horizons, we can actually pull them all back to a common domain. And instead of doing multiple expectation calculations, we can do a single vector-valued expectation calculation. Now, when we compare the pullback Koopman approach to Monte Carlo, we can show faster convergence rates, and we can get free air bounds and tolerancing via quadrature integration. Whereas in Monte Carlo, getting those air bounds can be very expensive. Now, one of the downfalls to the Koopman approach is it assumes no process noise. So we've built this capability into DIFFEQ uncertainty by composing uh, several other packages in Julia. Uh, I would like to point out the quadrature package that was developed as part of this work. It's essentially a meta package uh, around other quadrature approaches in, in Julia. Right now, we export a single function expectation uh, that takes the observable G and ODE problem arrays for the initial conditions and parameters. Now, these arrays can freely mix numerical types and distributions, and the integrations will be taken on uh, the lowest subspace possible and then the algorithm, either Koopman pullback or Monte Carlo. So right now this API is a little bit in flux and we hope to stabilize it in the next couple months. So to demonstrate this capability, uh, let's consider a bouncing ball. Uh, here we're just setting up the ODE problem. There's nothing, nothing new here. And let's say we wanna introduce some uncertainty in the coefficient of restitution which is how much energy is lost when the ball impacts the ground. We're also interested in computing the expectation of the square missed distance of this star on the wall. So to do this, we set up our loss function and our parameter array. Here we say 
gravity is deterministic, so we get a numerical value, and then a distribution for the coefficient. And we then compute the expectations as follows. For this particular case, the Koopman approach is over 1,600 times faster than running Monte Carlo. Now here we ran 100,000 Monte Carlo simulations. So one may say, well, that, that was overkill. Uh, it made the problem look worse. But if we look at kind of the rolling computation of the expected loss via Monte Carlo, we show that even after 100,000 simulations, it's still asymptoting to the solution computed by the Koopman approach. And impressively, the Koopman approach only required 15 simulations. So we want to leverage these efficiency gains for optimization. So we can think of uh, optimization under uncertainty by using expected losses and, and expectations on constraints, also known as chance constraints. Here are decision variables as the initial position and horizontal velocity of the ball. We're going to use NLOP to solve this problem. We set up our loss function for the expectation, and then put, use this function to put it in the form NLOP requires. We're doing forward diff through the expectation calculation, and then solve as normal. And we arrive at the following solution. For chance constraints, let's consider adding a wall at x equals 20. Uh, here is showing the trajectories from the previous optimal solution. But here we want to now minimize the expected square miss distance from the star, but only consider solutions that have less than 1% chance of impacting the wall. We have the same decision variables. So here we are simply setting up the ODE problem. We have some different callbacks we need to set up. Uh, we set up the constraint function. Here it's simply an indicator function. and returns a 1 if a trajectory would hit the wall, a 0 otherwise and the expectation of that function will return your probability. So again, we set up the constraint, put it in the form for NLOPT with uh, forward diff, and add the inequality constraint. And we now arrive at the following solution. You notice how the solution puts uh, the lowest uncertainty part of the trajectory as close to the wall to ensure that this constraint is met. So I know this is a very simple example, but I hope it highlights what's possible using this approach and is available in uh, DiffEQ Uncertainty. So please check out DiffEQ Uncertainty. Thank you for your time.